In the centre of every galaxy is a supermassive black hole, a black hole that can be millions or billions of times the mass of our Sun, that are kind of the most extreme objects in the universe. And sometimes they collide with each other. This is something, unfortunately, you, you'll never be able to see directly because they don't give out light, they're black holes, but you can see them through the gravitational waves that they give out. And in 2034, we'll be launching a spacecraft into space, which will be a giant gravitational wave detector. It's called LISA, the Laser Interferometric Space Antenna. And the facts around this mission are so cool, and the stuff we'll be able to discover are incredibly cool. So I wanted to do a video about it. Now, you probably remember a few years ago, we had the very first detection of gravitational waves, which scientists got very excited about, and with good reason. Everything we know about the universe so far comes from light, going from radio waves through visible light through to gamma rays. That's everything we know about space. Gravitational waves opened up a new way to look at space, and they saw mergers between black holes and other black holes of black holes and neutron stars. Now, I've done a video about that detection of gravitational waves, which you can see here, but the brief summary is there are two detectors in the US called LIGO and one in Italy called Virgo, and by combining them all together, they can make detections and see the direction that gravitational waves come through. They're interferometers, which means they're an L shape. They send lasers and bounce them off mirrors, and then they check uh, what happens when those lasers interfere with each other. If there's a change in dimension of one of the arms, they can detect changes in size 10,000 times smaller than a proton, which is just insane. Um, also, since they've been turned on, they've done a bunch of detection runs, and in the last run, they were seeing a gravitational wave signal uh, on average about once every five days, which means that black holes are merging incredibly frequently, far more frequently than we really expected before we started doing those measurements. So for a long time, people have wanted to put a gravitational wave detector into space. And there's good reasons for that. You can make it huge. So Lisa's gonna have a 2.5 million kilometer arm length, which is about six times the distance from the Earth to the moon. And also in space, it's quieter on Earth Ground-based detectors are susceptible to wobbling around because of seismic vibrations or a truck driving past or someone sneezing, <laughs> which you don't tend to get in space. So that's why they wanted to send it there. Trouble is, space missions are obviously very expensive and prone to failure. So they have to make sure that it works really, really, really well. LISA is a European Space Agency mission run in collaboration with NASA. Because it'll be so big, Lisa will be able to see things that we just can't see with the Earth-based detectors. You can actually see a different frequency range. So Lisa will be able to see one frequency range, ground-based detectors another. And because they see different frequency bands, they're kind of a complement to each other. So Lisa will be able to see the kinds of signals that LIGO and Virgo see years and years before they actually do the final merger, but the final merger will actually detect with the ground-based detectors. The coolest thing that Lisa will be able to see is the merger of supermassive black holes. Because supermassive black holes are the cores of galaxies, they'll probably be surrounded by gas. So if we detect gravitational waves that look like a supermassive black hole merger, we can look to see if there are any X-rays coming from the same event, which we will do in the future with the Athena X-ray Observatory. Lisa can tell us the direction of sources to an accuracy of about a square degree. This observation would be cool because it might explain the high energy jets we see coming from the cores of certain galaxies. We might even be able to see one of these jets turn on, which would be very exciting. And Lisa will also be able to see the absolute distance to things, which is very useful to calibrate other distance measures that we use, like Cepheid variables or supernovae. Lisa will be able to make an independent measurement of the Hubble constant more accurately than any current technique and be able to measure it in an epoch of cosmic history where other measurements aren't available. The Hubble constant is a foundation of our model of the universe and how it's expanding, so it's a very important thing to measure accurately. Also, gravitational waves don't really get absorbed by anything as they travel through space. So if there are signals strong enough, Lisa will be able to see out to the very edge of the observable universe. And as you're looking further away into deep space, you're also looking further back through time. So Lisa will allow us to study the history of how galaxies form from the early universe through to today. 
and Lisa theoretically will be able to see tiny amounts of time after the Big Bang, so something like a billionth of a second or even shorter after the Big Bang. And we don't know what we'll see there, but it could lead to new physics, it could lead to us understanding how the forces of nature emerged, maybe we'll detect some signal of new forces of nature, or um, test theories that we have like cosmic superstrings, which is something no other current technique can do. And it'll also be able to see orbiting white dwarf stars in our own galaxy. Now how does LISA work? Well, it's made of three spacecraft arranged in a triangle, and the spacecraft are flying in formation so that they stay exactly the same distance away from each other. Each one has two gold platinum cubes in the middle which are test masses, which are essentially mirrors which bounce the lasers back and forth from the other spacecraft. And those test masses are protected from radiation and particles from the outside space by the surrounding spacecraft, which has got micro-newton thrusters, so it, whenever it gets a bump from somewhere, it, it moves back so that inside the spacecraft it's completely undisturbed. So it's really exciting that we're going to be able to use this detector to probe into areas of physics that we've never had access to before. And it's going to launch in 2034, which is quite a long time in the future, but they've already launched a mission to test some of the technology. It's called LISA Pathfinder, and it ran from March 2016 to June 2017. And the critical part were these two two kilogram test masses, which they tested to see if they could just have freely falling through space, protected by that external spacecraft. They characterize the different sources of noise in space, things like uh, gas particles within the actual spacecraft. The other big part of the mission are the optics of the laser beams. They tested the optics and found that it's 100 times better than what they need. So now that they know the technology is going to work, they're building the LISA probe. And although we have to wait until 2034, I think it's going to be worth the wait because I think this technology has got the, it's going to be as revolutionary as something like the Hubble Space Telescope. A big thanks to the European Space Agency for letting me use a load of their cool animations in this video, and a special thanks to my patrons and people buying my posters. This channel simply wouldn't exist without your support, and so I really appreciate it. If you want to help me make more high quality science content, you can check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash domain of science, and you can get my posters at DFTBA for North America or Redbubble for the rest of the world, where I've made some of my posters available in French and Spanish. Links to all that in the description below, and thanks again for watching.